Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane and I don't know why I keep finding myself <laughs> up here filming videos. It is not the best setup, but it is a chance for me when TJ gets home to step away from all the noise and chaos that is going on downstairs to be able to sit with you guys and film a video. Now, I wasn't even planning on filming today at all. I was literally downstairs struggling to get a pregnancy diaries ready to go, to go up tomorrow. And I remembered on my community tab, somebody had reached out to me and asked me how I bought my house at such a young age. And I think it was brought up because one of my more recent vlogs, I was showing you guys the progress of the upstairs bathroom. To be honest, not much has changed since then. But I had mentioned that I bought my house when I was 19 years old. I am now 26, so I've been in the house almost seven years are you flipping kidding me this september is gonna be seven years that is crazy wow not much has changed <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm kidding my house looks really much different uh since the first time i bought it there's still so much work to be done but seven years wow a lot has changed so i thought the idea of making this kind of video is pretty interesting i never thought that i'd be sitting down to make one of these videos but if it interests you guys i'm more than welcome to open up and be brutally honest about my experiences about buying a house at such a young age um being honest about did i regret it did i not regret it like all that stuff we're gonna get into that i'm gonna hold nothing back i really wish i thought that i was gonna film this video because i would have loved to post on my community tab asking you guys if you had any specific questions but if you still have any specific questions you can find the thumbnail right here on my community tab and leave a comment and i would more than happily do it part two to answer any questions that i didn't answer um also you can ask me on my instagram and facebook uh, yeah, my Instagram and Facebook as well. Again, just by finding this thumbnail and asking your questions there. So don't feel like you missed out. I'll, you know, I'll do a part two uh, if there's enough questions. I am just gonna, I guess, start from the beginning. I'm also gonna pop online on Google um, and just see if there are any commonly asked questions about buying a home. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be like, young people buying a home, anybody buying a home, uh, kind of what to expect, what I would, would we'll, we're, let's just get into it. So the whole reason that I bought a house at such a young age is because I was that rebellious teenager who's like, when I'm 18, I'm gonna move out of my house, I'm gonna make my own money, I'm gonna make my own rules. Now, mind you, I had a job at 14 years old. My parents owned a restaurant, so I started really young. I didn't do any after-school curricular anything, <laughs> nothing. I went to school, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning and went to school by 7.30. I was out by 2.10, home by 2.30, at work to, at till, at work at three and then out by 8.30, home at nine, and then like bed at like two in the morning because I played World of Warcraft so flippin' much. And I probably were, I mean, I worked part-time. Um, you know, I was still in school so I needed to concentrate on my studies, but I always knew that college was probably not really gonna be my thing. As I entered senior year, I, uh, you know, I had, I had started my first job freshman year of school and I was making good money. I mean, for a 14 year old, I was making good money. You know what I mean? Um, I had all this money to spend on clothes and at the time I wasn't into makeup that the way that I am now. Um, I used to just kind of binge watch YouTube videos, not really ever thinking that I would become a YouTuber myself. Um, that's basically what I did. I just <laughs> spent money. I went out with my friends. I and I worked. That was my life between 14 and 18. Now, when I reached 18 years old and I had brought up the idea of wanting to get my own place because I felt like I was making such good money, which probably like was $12 an hour, which, you know, is still good, especially for somebody who making that age. I'm not trying to belittle that at all, but like I underestimated how much uh, owning a home would actually end up costing me. When I was 18 and I brought up the idea of wanting to move out, my first idea was to go into an apartment. Now my parents are like really big on investing, like making your money work for you. I, I, I'm trying to be a little bit 
tiptoey around certain subjects because I don't want anyone to feel bad after this video about like any situation that you're in but my parents didn't recommend um, an apartment because they told me that I would just end up spending my money over and over paying rent every month and once I move out I own nothing like I take nothing except for what I bought to go into the apartment with me. With that idea, this sun is crazy. It's like behind a cloud, so I'm working with it, but, ooh, hello. With that idea, they said, why don't we invest in a house? <laughs> why, I, the first time my parents ever brought up that idea, I'm like, are you flipping crazy? Like, what do you mean buy a house? Like, that wasn't even, in my radar, I just wanted the freedom that most teenagers want. I'm gonna adjust a little bit. So, so that was not my idea. I was not like, I want to move out and buy a house. Yes. Now, I think there would have been definitely pros to having the apartment. Yes, at the end of the day, I wouldn't have owned anything besides what was actually in the apartment. Um, but I wouldn't have had to worry about things breaking. I wouldn't have had to worry about lawn mowing, uh, plowing, and, like any of that stuff. You know what I mean? So. There are times when I look back and say, that would have been nice because that's all my responsibility. Now, being 18 years old, I didn't know about any of that. I wish I, I wish, at the time, I wish I looked harder into that fact, but now looking back, I don't regret buying a home. So anyways, we started, um, the first thing I had to do is my mom said, well, you gotta start saving for a down payment. Um, and I'm blessed. Like I know that there are people who don't have this in their life and I am beyond blessed and beyond grateful for my parents. But they said, whatever I can save for a down payment, they will match me. In the meantime of saving up for this down payment and building credit, guys. I didn't have a credit card <laughs> yet. I had just turned 18. You gotta be 18 to have a credit card. So I bought a credit, well, I applied for a credit card. I applied for Discover and they accepted me and I bought everything that I purchased. I bought on that card because I just really needed to start building up my credit. You know, it took a long time, maybe <laughs> like eight months, almost a year into building up my credit. I had about $5,000 saved for a down payment. Matched by my parents, I had $10,000. Now that I had built up my credit, now that I had a down payment, my credit still wasn't enough. Nobody was gonna accept, a, a, at the time, 18 year old kid <laughs> who only had a, one credit card under her name and car insurance and my phone bill. Even though I was on time, I was really, really, really good about paying my bills. Even though I was on time all the time for everything, that wasn't good enough to buy a home. So once again, I'm extremely blessed, but my parents agreed to co-sign. Um, basically, that means the house is under my name, but if I fail to pay the mortgage, it would fall on my parents' name. So they put a lot of trust, but they knew that I was really good about um, finances and stuff. So they, you know, agree to it, which I'm, again, extremely grateful for and will always be grateful for because they really helped push my push my future into the direction that it's gone in. When it came time, this is one of my biggest pieces of advice. Um, I wish somebody had told me, when it's time to actually start looking at homes on the market, you know, you wanna find a realtor. I really liked my realtor. Uh, he was very honest with me, I felt. Like he pointed out absolutely everything. I don't feel like he just wanted to make a sale and that's super important. Be comfortable with your realtor and if you feel like they're just like, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, um, find somebody else, seriously. It's, it's really important because it's gonna fall down on your shoulders, not theirs. At the end of the day, they are still doing their job trying to make money, but just be comfortable with your realtor. So when it actually came time to look at houses, the one thing that I would recommend is not falling in love at first sight. There were so many houses that I looked at that I really wanted that was just out of my price range. <laughs> out of my price range. The, I think the bank at the time had given me like a budget for like, hundred and forty thousand dollars but that's high <laughs> like they look at your income I had to gather so much paperwork from my bank um, if you're thinking about starting to buy a home go to your bank and like print out statements from like six months you're gonna need all of that you need proof of income 
Um, all, it's it's so much fun. It's so much paperwork. You guys are not even prepared. And I kept falling in love with houses that were just simply out of my price range. And I kept just getting so discouraged because I'm like, well, it's out of my price range, but like, let's just put in an offer and see what they said. And they would always come back with no, like we need a bigger offer. And some of these houses I looked at and what they were asking for was way too much. So you definitely don't want to overpay either. So just, you know, be patient. The right house will eventually fall into your hands. My house was the 30th, 30th, <laughs> 30th house I looked at and I hated it. <laughs> I drove up to this house and I said, nope, I don't even want, I don't even want to look at it. I don't want to go in. And my parents convinced me to go in. Now this house was on the market for $110,000. And that's really, really, really cheap for a house, by the way, unless you're looking at like trailer homes, which are beautiful. And I looked at in the beginning um, for like maybe eighty, ninety thousand dollars um, $90,000. But $110,000 is like, low for New England. I mean, I live in New England, which tends to be more expensive anyways, but um, for this home, they were asking 110,000. And this house had been on the market for over a year. So <laughs> as much as I didn't want to at the time, I put in an offer. I think we offered $105,000 and they accepted. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> no! <laughs> so they accepted it and it took a while to close when, um, you know, the realtor put in the offer, they got back that they accept. I remember the phone call. My mom called me and she's like, guess what? I said, well, what? They're like, they're accepted it. And at the time, like, as much as I didn't really like, like the house, I was super excited because after 30, 29 times of being rejected, um, I was just excited. This was actually happening. I was actually gonna own a piece of property. Once you get like all that situated, I actually met with the homeowner. We signed over papers. They gave me the keys, which is super exciting. Um, the closing date that they give you probably isn't the closing date that they're actually gonna that you're actually gonna get. I was originally supposed to close, I think, in maybe July, and then they pushed it back to August of 2012. Uh, and I didn't actually move in until September. So they kept pushing it back, kept pushing it back, which I was kind of grateful for, because, well, I mean, at the time I only had my bedroom to pack up, but I was also looking at yard sales for furniture. I'm like, I just need furniture. I can I can update furniture later. Half of this stuff is still stuff that I <laughs> flip and bought when I first bought this house. And now we're like just starting to update stuff seven years later. It takes a long time. Um, but I just needed stuff to get to get going. I think my couch, I literally got off the street. Um, I bought bookshelves at a yard sale, just like stuff like that. So I was trying to be super budget friendly. When I finally moved in, everything was great. <laughs> I, I honestly really loved it. Um, I was kind of scared to sleep here like my first night. I ended up getting my very first cat, Felix. From We rescued him from the MSPCA. Um, he ended up coming in and he was like my little buddy. He made me feel safe. And uh, this was actually, my bedroom now was the first bedroom that I ever slept in. Um, eventually I moved my bedroom into what is now my daughter's room, but we moved back when she was born to create the nurseries. So the first night, couple nights were so scary and at the time I had a best friend and I would invite her over all the time. Um, my house was again super unfurnished, but I just, I, I was comfortable with her. I ended up going to college, a uh, community college for three semesters, so I didn't even finish my associate's degree. Um, I ended up dropping out of college and just, I wanted to continue working uh, to help pay my bills. Now, again, the first couple of months were a breeze. <laughs> Paying my bills, like, again, I was on time. I was really good about budgeting. And then winter started coming. <laughs> Mind you, I, you know, I moved in in September, so by, like, October, it started getting kind of chilly, and that's when I realized that I had to buy propane, um, a bill that I wasn't necessarily expecting. You know, I had budgeted out all my like utilities. I got my utility set up. I had, um, I don't even think I had cable. I think I had like Netflix with my Xbox. Um, and that was really it. Like I had, you know, my car insurance, my phone bill, stuff like that. Uh, and then my credit card that I had used to build up the credit. So the first sort of like, uh oh moment was when I realized that I had to uh, like 
spent another extra $400 to fill up my propane tanks and at that moment is when I realized that I didn't, I thought I budgeted. <laughs> you think you budget, but then you don't. <laughs> you know, it's, t it's taken me a long time to realize what the actual expenses of living in a home were, um, you know, just after years of being here living through winters. Now, if you're in a obviously warmer climate, you m might have better luck and be able to get away with not spending as much. Um, but what was funny is my husband, TJ, at the time, we were like best friends with that other best friend that I mentioned. We're, like the three of us were like inseparable. I offered if they wanted to move in as roommates. I didn't necessarily need the finances. You know, I was like, I was panicking a little bit over the whole propane situation. But again, like I was just working and I would just pick up more hours. But they were over all the time anyways. And we spent all time, all the, like, we always spend time together so I said like would you guys like to experience some freedom and and move in and with the other best friend that ended up falling out our friendship kind of uh faded I mean that's a whole nother thing I'm not even gonna get into that um but TJ ended up moving in and we weren't dating at the time I was actually with another guy the boyfriend that I had before TJ and um, before he even moved in, me and the boyfriend just ended up breaking up. And it wasn't because of TJ that moving in that we broke up. The ex-boyfriend that I had just had a really dry sense of humor. And I have to be with somebody that is funny. So honestly, I was kind of considering breaking up with him anyways. Um, and then it just came to a point where I ended up just breaking it off because I really wasn't happy. And then TJ moved in started kind of developing feelings for each other and here we are five years later still married with uh, another child on the way <laughs> that is basically the story i'm sorry i feel like this video is going to be so long but there's so much to talk about i feel like that is kind of the story um so just be prepared for the few things that i mentioned also just realize that if you're buying a home especially a starter home things break all the flipping time <laughs> From light bulbs to water heaters to septic tanks, just have savings <laughs> and be prepared to spend said savings. It things break all the t all the time, and it's really obnoxious. And that's something that I definitely didn't expect. Um, just really try to have a savings. Uh, up and and you know be prepared for that is it's definitely helpful we've saved so much money just honestly youtubing stuff youtube has been our savior when it's come to um fixing stuff because not only do you have the expense of actually fixing something but then you have the expense of paying someone to fix something so a lot of these projects that have broken on us we've well i shouldn't say we my husband has fixed himself um we're literally learning from YouTube how to rebuild our bathroom. Um, you know, we had like carpet put in from Home Depot and stuff. So you can do stuff like that. But I would really recommend if you're not handy, start learning how to do like little things if you're willing to. Um, that's why I also say sometimes having an apartment just works for people. If you're super busy, you travel a lot or you're just not handy. Like if you're just like maybe a single girl or something, um, maybe an apartment would be a better option. But for us, this is like our investment. You know what I mean? If we lose our jobs, <laughs> if we lose, um, you know, if just something financially crazy happens, we can just sell this home. We can put it on the market. I'm not guaranteed saying that it would sell right away. Um, but this is our savings in a way for our future. Um, we do have like a for, uh, retirement plan already in the works, but we invest in this home to reap the benefits later on when we eventually sell this home. So I found seven frequently asked questions by the first time home buyers. I'm just gonna answer those real quick. Um, and again, if you have any questions of your own, please feel free to reach out to me on community chat um, and I will be happy to do a part two. I feel like I'm answering a lot of questions that I would have had, um, but who knows, you guys might have some really good ones. The first question is says, should I buy instead of rent? Uh, and it says some of the, freedoms or it says some of the benefits of buying a house rather than renting a house or apartment so if you're if you're kind of going back and forth here are some benefits um there are tax breaks which 
I'm not really sure how that works. I know like we have property tax and all of that, but that's all like integrated into our mortgage. So we don't see like a second property tax bill. Like I get it in the mail and I keep it for record, but like we don't have another bill, you know what I mean? Uh, financial gains is what I talked about. Like this is a savings. We can always turn around and sell it. I couldn't turn around and sell an apartment. Appreciation and value. The more we put into this home, our value goes up. Equity, I'm still not 100% sure. <laughs> I don't even know half of these things. I am a, um, you know, homeowner. It's just equity, um, freedom. I don't want, like, I didn't want to live in a condo. I didn't want to live in an apartment where I have neighbors so close to me. I do like having my property, having my yard. That's a huge thing about raising my kids. You know what I mean? We can go outside. I don't have to worry about my neighbors being out there. It, it's just, that's really, really nice, I will say. A sense of pride, sure. <laughs> Sure, when I was 19 years old, it was pretty cool to boast that I had a house and it wasn't my parents' house and I was able to host. I threw a lot of parties, guys, I did. I wasn't like, I, I was never a popular person, but I had a group of like five to 10 friends we would have over all the flipping time to have parties and it was just really nice. Um, and it wasn't anything crazy, like we weren't, we weren't like bad kids, you know? We would play, like we would get some beers and we would, um, I'm not promoting underage drinking. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think any of us were 21 at the time. Maybe one of my friends. I don't remember. I've never been a big drinker anyways. Um, but we would always play like card games and just have people over and it was just so much fun. Number two, am I ready to buy? These are just some of the questions that you can ask yourself. It says, do you have a steady job? Obviously that's really important. You don't want to miss out on your mortgage. I think if you miss three mortgage payments, it goes like to the bank, the bank comes after you. I'm not sure, I haven't gotten to that point and I don't plan on it. Do I have a positive bill paying history? That's huge. Again, I had co-signers, but I think a huge part of me being accepted was I had a really good history of paying my bills on time. Um, no bank is gonna wanna give you the loan to buy a home if you haven't showed that you were you know, responsible. You're their liability if they accept you. So keep that in mind. Do I have a few outstanding long-term debts like debt, like car payments. At the time, I owned a, I think it was a 1999 Ford Escort that I bought with $1,200 in cash. So I had no pay, like I had no real debt at the time. Um, the only debt that I had was the credit that I was building and paying off every month. Have I saved for a down payment? Obviously, that's super important. Um, I think that if you put less than 20% of like the home value on a down payment, you have to pay a thing called PMI. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I know that it just tacked onto my mortgage. It was like $100 extra a month that I had to pay. So if you wanna avoid paying that PMI, and it goes away after a while, but if you wanna avoid paying that, then I think you have to put 20% down on a home. That could have changed, this was seven years ago, um, but just keep that in mind. And obviously, can I afford to pay mortgage taxes, utilities, and insurance? So I also have home insurance, which is super cool. It's also like within my mortgage. So I, again, I see the statement come in. I have Allstate. I've always loved Allstate. They were amazing. When my uh, kitchen flooded, you want home insurance because I wasn't expecting my kitchen to flood. <laughs> Does credit score impact my ability to buy? If your score is low, it's not impossible to get a loan, but it will take longer. Uh, I would just say, you know, have a have a decent credit score. How much do I need for a down payment? Lenders expect between five to twenty for five to twenty percent. I put ten percent. My home was about one hundred and five thousand. We put about ten thousand dollars down, so it was about ten percent. Make a budget, set a goal, and stick with the plan. Saving and sacrificing is how most people come up with their first down payment. What are the homeowner's tax benefits? Typical deductions are mortgage interest and real estate taxes. I don't know. Loan discount points, capital gain benefits. What is the difference between pre-qualified for a loan and pre-approved? Pre-qualification is getting pre-qualified for mortgage gives the first time home buyers an indication of how much they might qualify to borrow. 
um, pre-approved, better yet, is getting pre-approved for a mortgage was based, which is based on a real credit score and also puts real estate agents and home sellers at ease. How do I get the best mortgage? Um, once you find your dream home, there is not always an aquatic, a, a, adequate enough time to do your research, to so do your homework. Um, we had, my mom had a friend who was a real estate, uh, my mom had a friend who worked with a mortgage company, so we talked to her, and we ended up just going with that company, and we're still with them. So I'm not really sure like what to look up. That is definitely some research that you would want to do on your own, but find a good mortgage company as well who's willing to work with you, and um, just really talk to them if you have any questions. I feel like this video was so flippin' long. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there was so much to talk about. The last thing I want to say is just really don't get discouraged. I've talked to so many people who wanted to buy a home and they thought it was just gonna be like, not necessarily like a quick and easy process, but you don't understand how much work is actually gonna go into it from, again, collecting all the, the bank information that you're gonna need to finding a real estate, to finding a mortgage company, to finding the home and being accepted, to saving your down payment, to saving for your utilities, you want you need to look for utilities. You need to call your uh, gas company. You need to call. You need to figure out if you're doing propane or gas or natural gas. How you're gonna heat your home? Calling the electric company to get your electric turned on. There is just make a list. <laughs> make a list and start knocking each thing off, and you'll feel a little less overwhelmed as a 19 year old girl going into this with knowing absolutely nothing. It was really discouraging at times and there were times where I'm just like, I wanna stay at home. And that is my last piece of advice to you guys. Stick it out as long as you can. Um, I know buying a home and having your freedom might be like a really, it might sound like a really cool thing, but if you have it good where you are, stay for a while. You know what I mean? If that's an option for you, stay and save and save and save and save and just be grateful that you don't have to pay your mortgage or rent yet. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed, please go ahead, leave a thumbs up and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button and I hopefully will see you guys in my next one. Bye.